We added a couple of cool new features into Magnum version 2.6. We got a request from a VFX supervisor that uses Magnum to detect all of the cuts in their uh, shots. And, and then what they needed to do was enter all of these shots into their shot database and wanted to include a thumbnail for each shot. So in 2.6 now, there's two new result modes, save thumbnails for each cut and save thumbnails for each marker, which will save a thumbnail um, for either cuts or markers, depending on, on what method you use to uh, detect your scenes. So the other addition is, is if, you, if you hover here over the name, you'll see that there's a couple of new uh, keywords we added, um, including layer in point, layer length, but also this num this num, um, numbering thing, because currently you could only just count clips, which would just count clip one, clip two, clip three, clip four, clip five, etc. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename the layer just Lucy here. And then instead of doing clip, I'm going to use this new feature called num. So num lets you number from any number you would like. So for example, a, a common shot numbering techniques is to use padding. So OO and then padding at the front and the back. So, so shot one is actually shot 10. And instead of incrementing one at a time, in other words, 11, 12, 13, I'm actually going to do comma ink. Well, first, let me just show you what this does. This might show you. So I have this here. I will split it into new layers. Um, I already have my detection analysis. So you can see here that it numbered them 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to undo now, and, and then I'm going to and tell it this additional argument that says increase by 10. So now ink equals 10 means that when I run it again, you'll see that now it's numbered 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. So this is a cool new keyword that gives you a little bit more flexibility about how your cuts are named, etc. So now once you have your layers named, we can now choose a new, uh, this save thumbnails for each cut. And then um, up here is a new uh, frame that says, which frame number to use for each thumbnail? So if I, if I go to the beginning here, so this would be the frame zero of the cut. And then if I were to go forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So for example, if I wanted to be the 10th frame of each cut, I would then change this to 10 or three or whatever. So we'll just leave it at zero for now. I just wanted to explain how that works. And then you select the frames that you want to export. Now, keep in mind that the endpoint needs to be within the work area. So if you can see here, um, the first shot, 010, is actually the endpoint is not within the work area. So I would need to um, trim this so that the work area, so that the endpoint is within the work area. So now it'll include it. And then you want to just go ahead and select the layers that you want to create thumbnails for. And then we'll go ahead and say, do it. It's going to ask me where I would like to save it into. I'll just pick this folder here and it's going to now save a thumbnail for each cut. Now, um, my comp is set at full resolution right now. So when I go and I look in the finder, we're going to see that these thumbnails are, are saved at the full resolution. They're PNGs. So you can see how they're saved here, which is great. Now, um, the thumbnails are saved at whatever the comp resolution is. So, for example, if I go to quarter resolution here, they will be saved smaller. I'm also going to show you another feature while I'm here. If I create a text layer and I call this text layer slate, slate. Now I can put anything I want in the slate and I can also use the keyword. So, for example, I can say shot and then I'll use the layer name for that. You can uh, use upper and lower as you wish. And then, for example, I could say the length of the cut. And then I'll just go ahead and say layer length. And now if I wanted this value to be in frames, I would add layer length frames. But if not, it, if I just do layer length, it'll just give it to me in time. And then you can add any other information you want here, like you could add today's date. For example, uh, it, it, you can customize this however you want. You can also use any font that you'd like for this. So if we'll just go to regular. Um, 
Now, just keep in mind that the entire font, uh, sorry, you can only use one font style for the entire text layer. Okay, so now that I have this set up, again, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the layers, but you have to also select the slate. Make sure you select the slate so that it knows that's the text layer you wanna use. And then again, I'll just do the same thing here. And it'll override, by the way, any existing uh, thumbnails that are there. So now if we go and take a look here, you can see now that the resolution is, is at a quarter resolution and the you can see here now that it's in, inserted the, the layer name as well as the length for each one of these shots. And so notice how it's, it's actually doing it in time. Um, if I wanted to have done this in frames, I would have just done frames like this. Again, upper and lower doesn't really matter. And select that. Let's go ahead and do it again. So let's take a look. And now you can see that it's in um, frames, the length. Okay, now, uh, yeah, the length one is, is very long because the length of the shot is much longer. And then the final feature is if in the, if in the export, if in the folder that you're exporting to, you create a file called export template.txt, it needs to be exactly like this. And you go ahead and edit this, you can also put uh, keywords and whatever you want in here. So, so here I can do layer name. Um, you know, you could, uh, like I said, you could do uh, any anything you want. But what's cool about this here is you can actually do uh, tabs or or commas, and then uh, and then do here the layer length frames. Uh, you know, I could do a tab, I could do, for example, the layer in point. And if, as we can see with the tabs, what's cool about this, so I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to go ahead and close it and I'm going to re-export again. And this time, again, if you don't want to have the slate, you would just obviously just turn off the slate. And then here we go. So now we'll go ahead and export again. Now it's telling me that it detected that template and it created a new export uh, report. So now when we go here and we look at the export, you can see here that, oh, and they put the in point in time. You can also make that in frames, by the way. I guess that would make sense here. Frames, save. Let's, let's just export that again. Okay. So now, that, now that's in frames. And what's cool now is because I reuse tabs, I can open this up in a um, spreadsheet program. And you can see now that it actually has put it into, into its own columns, which can be very handy. So those are the new features in version 2.6 of Magnum. Hope you guys find them useful. Thanks.